Alright. Fluid. In the outbox, there's a, a file called cutbowl.ma. And it's already animated for you. It is? It is. It wasn't before, it is now. It's like, ah! So it's now in the outbox? In the outbox, yes. yes. And the only reason I did that is because I want to make sure everybody's working from the same file file. Alright, so and, if you work in the effects department, you wouldn't be doing the animation, you'd be doing the effects. So, this is the equivalent of you working at DreamWorks or Pixar or Sky or somewhere, where the animation is done and you have to add the effects. So, <coughs> let's say you're doing a movie about cooking. Mine is animated. What? It's not animated. You may have grabbed it before. I'll say. Grab it again. Um, let's say you're doing a movie about cooking. This is your scene that you've got to work with, and you need to do the uh, effect of the liquid in this cup pouring into the bowl. Right? So what we're going to do, we're going to be working in the end dynamics tab. Now there is a dynamics tab as well. That's older dynamics stuff that Maya has. We're not using the dynamics tab. We're using end dynamics, which stands for nucleus. The N stands for nucleus. That's the name of the solver that Maya has. So anything that is in a nucleus solver will interact. So later in the, in the, in the course when we do um, cloth and we do hair, that all works with the end solvers. So those will all interact. Just the way that the solvers work. The first thing we're going to do, right, everybody make sure that you grab this from the out box and make sure you have the one that animates, right? So the cup pours into the bowl. Now the other thing we're going to do is, uh, actually, I'm do that. Okay. so we've got a cup, we've got a floor, and we've got a bowl. So what we need to do is we need to set these up so that they'll work with our, first thing we're going to do is fill this cup up. And then we're going to let it settle, right? When you first fill it, it's going to fill the cup up out of the car. And then if you just hit play, uh, your part is going to like settle as the animation goes. You get to your result. So what we want is we want to start with the liquid already in the cup, nice and still and motionless, so that it gets motion from the motion of the cup, not the fact it's being solved. Right? So imagine if you. Um, Say you've got a bucket of water, right? And you want to dump it into another container. If you take the bucket and you dump it in the container and you could like freeze time at the second that the liquid goes into that other bucket, as soon as you let time go again, the water's gonna splash all around and everything, right? What we want to do is we're gonna let this settle. So we're gonna let Maya simulate that liquid over and over until it settles down in that cup and, and like calm it down. And then and this will make more sense in a second. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select our cup, right? And we're going to make sure we're in the end dynamics tab. And uh, we're going to go to end particles. And if you go to create end particles, see how it's got this, these sections here, points, balls, cloud, thick cloud, and water? We want to select water. This is a two-step process for whatever reason. That's what Maya signed up. So, First, you want to make sure that you have water selected in there, right? Everybody's got the water check. Water are you yes. talking about? The water part of oh the God. menu. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so water is selected. I want to go to fill object and make sure you have your cup selected. You go to fill object and then go to the option box here. <clears throat> so let's talk about what this stuff is a little bit. Nucleus one is the solver. So there's no solver in the scene. Think of a solver as like a little um, box, right? Everything that happens in that box can interact. Anything outside the box can't interact with whatever's in the box. You know what I mean? Um, so anything that you want to have interact with this water is going to have to be in this nucleus one solver. We're not going to do that. We're gonna, this is only one effect. But later in the quarter, we'll go over stuff with like cloth and, and particles and everything. And that's when that'll kind of come into play. Resolution, that's the amount of detail in the liquid. The higher this number, the 
better your liquid will look, the longer it will take to solve. Uh, fill bounds min x is how far across, right? Uh, max is, is, is how far across. Min and max y is how high or low. Uh, min and max z is how deep, right? Uh, so what we're going to do is this will fill this cup completely. Uh, particle density set to one. That, that's how dense the particles are packed together. We're going to kind of just leave this at the defaults for now to show you what that looks like. Now this right here is double wall. This has to do with your geometry. So what we've got, if you look at the geometry, is we've got, we don't just have a cylinder, right? We've got double walled geometry. So we've got this right here, something like that, right? So what Maya needs to know is, when I say to fill this, do I want the liquid to fill the cup like a real cup with, or do I want the liquid to be inside the walls of this cup? So if I don't select double wall, it'll do the wrong thing. So let me do the wrong thing and show you what that looks like. So if I click particle fill, actually I don't need to put particle in there. Um, let me do this. Let me change my idea. So with double wall selected, I think what happened with my resolution was too high. Let me undo this. So you want to get your um, resolution. So the higher the resolution, the more particles you put in there. See that? That's not related to how many particles, right? Um, it's related to, uh, it's not related to how many particles, what is it? Yeah, I mean, it's not like the number of particles you're putting in there, it's just... No, it's the resolution of, so it's, it's how defined the liquid is going to be. Um, so it does kind of correspond to how many particles are in there. So with the resolution of 50, see how much it slows down by it? This file probably something like 25. So now you want to make sure you have double wall selected and close back and select. <coughs> so if I hit play, watch what happens. Oh, actually, you want to make sure that you have uh, play every frame selected and max playback speed in real time. Maya needs to know what it is doing on every frame. So you see my liquid just falls right through the cup. So you want to make sure that you've got play every frame for playback speed and max playback speed 30. Right? Does anybody know why the liquid isn't doing anything? Yeah, it doesn't know that those things, it doesn't know that it needs to fly those things. So what we need to do is we need to select the cup and go to uh, end mesh, right? And then, again, the end just stands for nucleus. So basically what we're doing is in this menu here, we can do different things that will create mesh that will interact with end nucleus solved object. So this liquid, in order for it to even see this cup and know what it's supposed to do, this needs to be an end mesh. Same with the bowl, same with the floor. So what will happen is, um, We'll set up our cup, our bowl, on our floor so that when, it, when we pour the liquid, if, if some of it splashes out, it'll hit the floor and it'll, it'll react the right way. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my cup first. I'm going to say end mesh, create passive collider. And I'm going to go to the option box there. And all this does is it says solve or nucleus one. Now the reason for that is because you can have multiple nucleus solvers in the same scene. And I have to pick which one I want to put it in. Right now we only have the one solver, so there's only one option. Or I can create a new solver. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, maybe you've got a really complicated scene, and you've got, uh, say you're doing a car commercial, and you want to have like water splash over the front of the car, right? 
but then you also have this flag that's on the antenna of the car that's flapping in the wind, right? So what you want to do is maybe you want to do the froth one way and do the water another way, and they're not going to interact with the froth and the water. So you can have separate solvers in the same scene. And then you come. Yep. Um, if you had two solvers, how would you make them both collide with the cup? You have to duplicate the cup and put it in each solver and only render it once. That's the other thing too, is with a lot of this stuff, we're not doing it yet, but we kind of did it with G-spoke, where you can have an object that you don't render, you just have right. it so it'll behave a certain way, like you did it with your path, right. you made that, that path to the G-spoke. Um, it's like a helper shape or like a proxy object. You're not gonna use it to render, you're just using it to get the simulation to do what kind of to do. Um, so you could do that. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna say make collide. Oh, sorry, I've got the mesh selected that I want to make. And mesh create passive collide. Sorry, but back, but back to your preferences, just to make sure uh, how you had it set up. Oh, they should already be set up in the scene, but in preferences, it should be uh, centimeter, 30 frames per second. Okay. Now, the reason that, that your settings are important with this, the reason I gave you a file, is because if you didn't have a set to centimeters, you had this set to meters, and you just modeled this however, now you're not filling a cup, you're filling a swimming pool. Right. So your liquid's going to get different. So scale is very important for something like this. Um, so now if I hit play, this is what happens. It's really hard to see my particles because it's a display issue I have seen kind of ghosted out in there. There's not really a better way. Actually, if I select them, then you see. See how they kind of they crush down? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they pour out. Why does it crush down like that? Because they're just filling a void <coughs> right now. They don't know anything about gravity or anything until you press play. It's a pipe that's Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, oh, I'm supposed to fall. So it falls down and it, it gets packed down and we can change things in the viscosity. Area. So now you see it goes right through the bowl, right through the floor, because we didn't set up these shapes yet to be in mesh. So what I'm gonna do is go back, select my bowl, and say end mesh create passive collider. And then the floor, and say end mesh create passive uh -huh. collider. And by default, it puts all of them into that nucleus one solver. And you don't have to do that whole double thing? No, because the double thing is just when we fill the liquid. The object we're filling the liquid. I'm sorry, I know this isn't directly to what you're doing right there, but say if you had another cup pouring in there, uh -huh. and you wanted the bowl to inter collide with that one, you would have to make a second bowl? <coughs> no, because the, the end mesh is just, um, okay. Because so you're applying it to that first nucleus though, right? right. But you can have multiple fluids in the same nucleus. Okay. So they'll collide with each other, they'll collide with the bowl. So I you're just you. making this once, you're making this once. So as long as it's the same nucleus, fluid or whatever. It'll, it'll collide, yeah. Okay. The only reason you would want to use two bowls is if you wanted to have separate, separate things. A different fluid. Yeah. And then in that case, the fluids would ignore each other and pass right through each other like they weren't there. Okay. Um, so let me see if I can. So there's my liquid pouring in my bowl.
miss something. Did you miss something? Well, I made them in Enmesh, but I think I missed something because it won't, it still won't pour into the bowl. It's just, it'll stay there. You gotta back up your timeline all the time. 